Injuries in rugby, however, are not only limited to the tackling player. Injuries to the ball carrier contribute substantially to the total number of rugby injuries. Smart rugby is effective and safe. What this means for the ball carrier is that you do not always have to crash it up and try and run through or over players. The more you do this, the greater the toll on your body and the greater the chances of getting injured. On top of this, if the opposition are wise to your tactics, they can defend the situation easily and neutralize your attack. If your aim is to run through or over your opponent, all they have to do is wrap their arms around you and the ball, and ball possession is lost, slowed down, or turned over. Once again, Paul True, the national sevens coach, takes us through some very important steps on how to be effective when carrying the ball on attack. Good morning, guys. Okay, guys, today we're going to focus uh, on effective ball carry. And I think, you know, lately we've seen uh, too many players uh, trying to make uh, far too much contact. And this isn't smart rugby. Smart rugby is about using your rugby skills to try to avoid the contact in the first place. And one of the things that we're going to focus on today is to use our effective running lines or evasive running lines. When you run evasive lines, you try to, to use your rugby skills, try to breach the defence line and to put your support players into space. What needs to be in place you know, for effective running lines to, to happen in the first place? Uh, it's to carry the ball with both hands so that we can create uncertainty to the defenders. Okay, Sticky, if you can just come forward so that we can explain why it's important to run with the ball in both hands. Just tuck the ball under your one arm. If you have the ball under your one arm and I'm the defender, it's very, it's very easy for me to see that you're not going to pass the ball. So I can pair myself for the contact and also for the tackle. If you put the ball in both ends, okay, then it's creating uncertainty, it's creating doubt. And this is why it's important that always, when you start running, to keep the ball in both hands and you have options where you can go either to the left or to the right and you can actually beat your defender much easily. Coach, what about looking defenders in the eye to engage them? Absolutely right, uh, Renford. Uh, Sticky, if you could just look me in the eye. So as a defender, I'm engaged, I am in fixing defense and I, and I don't know what to do. I think the purpose for Sticky now is he can play support uh, players into space either on this side or on that side. Coach, identifying the weak shoulder. Okay, Marius, if you can just come forward. Okay, just give the ball to me. If I'm the attacker and Marius is the defender, my purpose is to identify the weak shoulder and the weak shoulder is always the one that's not being presented. So this is his strong side. This is the side that I would like to avoid. So this is the shoulder that I'm going to target and then I'm going to play into space. What else? Uh, to also look if the defender is crossing his feet. That's a great indicator, Swipe, but why is that important? Um, if I'm a defender and I'm approaching coach and I cross my feet, I'm wrong for it and I'm going in one direction only. Okay, excellent guys. And as a ball carrier, I have a complete advantage because I know that he can only go in one direction and I can beat him on the inside. What else, guys? Coach, another, in, another indicator similar to crossing your feet is if, is a, is if a defender plants his feet. Then you, got, then you as an attacker have more options. Excellent, Paul. Those are the kind of indicators, guys, that we're looking at. If a guy is flat-footed, not on the balls of his feet, then you can uh, beat him on both sides. Hey, Coach, looking for exposed defensive lines. Excellent guys, we want to play smart rugby. We don't want to go and run straight into contact. We want to play it into spaces. So let's go to a draw. This is a simple agility drill. And uh, the purpose of this is basically to attack the weak shoulder of the player. So if this first agility pole is like a defender, I will approach the, 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 the agility pole of the defender with the ball in both hands and I can I beat him either side. As you can see, we've packed out a, a channel on this side and on that side as well. And the purpose of that is as I beat the defender, I keep attacking with a forward momentum with my shoulder square to the goal line. Guys, let's bowl on that. We're going to make it more evasive. So let's get the guy adjusting on the agility pole. Okay, guys, let's go back to the setting one and bring in a spin, which is more deceptive and also to get away from the player. Taking forward, guys. Keep attacking forward, eh?
We've covered the 1v1 agility running lines, so what we're going to do now is just to build it up. Uh, I'm going to get another play in, we're going to work on our cuts or our scissor lines. So Marius, if you can just come forward, just take the ball over there. We're going to do a scissor between me and Marius, so just keep attacking the agility pole over there. I'm doing a scissor with Marius, this is where the danger is coming from guys. I want to get away from this defender, so I need to step back into this channel and have my support on the outside again. another evasive drill uh, and the focus of this one is what we commonly refer to as uh, our overs and unders. So if we call the unders, I will go under this pole. If we call it the overs, it will be on the outside of this pole. Also guys, what we will add is another evasive running line where Alan will stand on the pole, he will move it to either side and the players, you will have to decide if, whether you're going to run the overs or the unders lines. In the next drill, we're going to try to uh, play it into space and also try to identify the weaknesses in the defense line. Uh, so what we're going to have, we're going to have five attackers at, at, uh, attacking against four defenders and just see how they're going to exploit the space. So what I will do is I will stand behind the, the attackers so that they can't see me and I will manipulate or give a call uh, and just showing the defenders they will be numbered from one to four. If I show them two, uh, then the second defender will collapse in defense and they will try to play it into that space. And if I give them a different number, let's say three or four, they will adjust and we'll just see if the, attack, the attackers will be able to, to manipulate and to exploit the space that's available.